It's a beautiful city of Vancouver, state of Washington. My name is Jong Woo Han. I am the president of Korean War Legacy Foundation, which has more than 1,500 Korean War veterans interview, not just from the United States, but from other 21 countries that participate in the war. We are doing this to preserve your memory because it's been a long time and to honor your service and sacrifice, but also we want to make this interview into curricular resources for the teachers so that they can use this interview when they talk about the Korean War in their classroom. That's why we are doing this. Uh, it's my great honor and pleasure to meet you, and Thank you for receiving me in your beautiful home, surrounded by 300 dolls. Yeah, it's a beautiful, and thank you. Please say your name. What is your name? Uh, Carl Leroy Fishman. Can, can you spell it? C-A-R-L-L-E-R-O-Y-H-I-S-S-M-A-N. -S -S yes, and what is your birthday? 321 29. 21 29. So that makes you 93. Right. Wow. It does. You, you look very young. <laughs> Not hardly. I don't feel very young. You don't? <laughs> but you look very young. Well, I'm lucky. I will admit that. <laughs> yeah. Had a good life. Wait. Got a good wife. What's her name? Lola. Lola? Yes. So she's the one who collected 300 dolls. <laughs> you could go on 3,000. <laughs> no. We're done with those. Okay. Where were you born? Uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Well, ah, very beautiful. Springs in Colorado. And... Please tell me about your family, parents, and siblings when you were growing up. Well, my dad worked in aircraft, uh, and uh, during the Second World War, he was inspector for the uh, Air Force to check for sabotage on crashes. Mm -hmm. My mother was uh, strictly a mother. She did work at a telephone company when I was young. Yeah. And uh, I have one sister, and she's uh, three years older than I am. So, uh, and when did you graduate your high school, and where? I went to high school in uh, Manitou Springs, Colorado, which is just out of Colorado Springs. What is the name of it? Manitou, M-A-N-I-T-O-U. Mm -hmm. I-T-O-U. O-U. High school. Right. When did you graduate? I graduated by popular demand. They kicked me out. <laughs> you kicked out? <laughs> yeah. I, it was during the war. And uh, my buddy was 6'4". Six six I was 6'2". My other one was only 5'6". We wanted to enlist because the war was going on. Uh huh. And uh, we went and enlisted, but they called our parents and found out we were only 16, so they wouldn't let us go. A lot of guys got in at 16, but because they called our parents, they, we didn't get in. Mm. But uh, that was uh, just one of those things I didn't. Uh, I got my GED through the Army when I enlisted, so I got my, um, finished that. Okay. When did you enlist? Army? In the Army? Yeah, did you enlist Army or? I enlisted in the Army in 1950. 1950? Yeah. Well, I was 49. I enlisted in 49. 49? I was in Korea in 50, so. So where did you get the basic military training? Uh, Fort Ord, California. And then when did you leave for Korea? Well, I went to OCS. 
I finished leadership school in Fort Ord. They sent me to OCS, and because I wasn't in the smartest bunch, four of us with me uh, went to Korea. They uh, flew us over on TW Airlines, and uh, they were hurt, in a hurry to get us here, I guess. But uh, that's when I went into Korea. So Actually, where? Japan in Cebu, and uh, then to Korea. So you landed in Japan, and then you went to Korea where? In Busan? Busan. Busan? We call it Busan, now it's Busan. Right. <laughs> when, when did you arrive in Busan? Well, it's uh, actually, it wasn't Busan I landed in. It was Wunsan in North Korea. I landed in North Korea before the Chinese came in. And uh, when the Chinese came in, they evacuated us out of Hong Nam, and then I went to Pusan from there. So, from Japan, you directly went to Wonsan? Wonsan, yeah. It's the east coast, right? Right. Yes. So, you didn't go to Busan, you directly go to Wonsan? I went from... Uh, Japan to Wonsan. Yeah. Uh, when did you arrive in Wonsan? It must have been around, let's see, I was there, had to be November, mm. uh, probably. November 1950. Yeah, because we got run out of there by, because I loaded on the ship Christmas Eve. Yeah. So what was your unit? Uh, third Division. Right. Uh, 7th Regiment, Heavy Mortar Company. Regiment, and what about Battalion? What Battalion? What's that? Battalion. You didn't belong to any Battalion? I'm not. Were you in a Battalion? Oh, 3rd third, third Battalion. 3rd Battalion. Yeah. And what company? Uh, heavy Mortar Company. What was your specialty? I was a recon officer driver. That was my job. It was, uh, it was Captain Aylward, which is not even mentioned in the third division book. He's one of the best officers I ever had. He, uh, he was a battlefield commissioned officer by uh, General Patton. And uh, I admired that man no end. He, he did survive the war, but he left the uh, uh, mortar company because he wanted to fight. He didn't want to be sitting in the backyard. And uh, so he took a line company and uh, left me behind. I guess it's a good thing. He was probably thinking I might survive here. Yeah. What was your rank at the time? Uh, staff sergeant. Staff sergeant? Yeah. So you were pretty high. Well, pretty good for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> and why did you land in Wonsan? What were you supposed to do there? Where did you go from there? Well, we went up, uh, well, we went into reserve. And uh, before the Chinese came in, and when the Chinese came in, they sent, because I was a driver, I didn't go. But they sent one platoon from all the companies to help get the Marines out of the Chosen Reservoir. Wow, so you were there? I wasn't at the Chosen Reservoir. I was up, oh, on the north coast, 15 miles below the border, right on the coast, because... Captain Aylward couldn't stand to not be involved in the fighting. So we went up the coast to, uh, and when the Chinese come in, we land, we got there just in the evening. And uh, he told me to go find a foxhole. And he went to talk to the commanding officer. But he... Uh, 
we weren't even supposed to be there. We were supposed to be in our county down at Woonsan, but uh, he just wanted to go, so we went. But because uh, we there wasn't any battle near us, and they hadn't gotten that far down. So you drove jeep or truck? What's that? Did you drove drive jeep? I drove, yeah. Or truck? Uh, jeep. 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 And you drove toward north? North on the coast. Uh huh. Till about the town 15 miles below the border. Really? So that's a far north, right? Yeah, it was far north. It How was... long did it take to get there? Oh, God, I don't remember. It took us probably half a day or so, but I know the Chinese cut the road off as soon as after we got there. And uh, we were trapped there until they could open the road again the next day, and then mm. we got out. But uh, it, uh, I don't know if I was scared or sick from something I ate, but I remember when he told me to go to the foxhole. I got halfway across the field, and I had to do my job, and I started to throw up, and I think I was probably scared. But I remember when I was squatting out there in the middle of the rice field, I watched the chi burst around me and I thought it was like the 4th of July. Mm. Never dawned on me it could kill me. I was that sick. And uh, I just uh, finally found a foxhole and then the next morning they cleared the road and we left and went back to the company. But... Uh, so you mean you went up north and then came back down back to one sun? Back down to one sun. Yeah. Or just somewhere between the chosen reservoir. I don't know where. Right. Because you just you just go wherever the company goes, wherever they tell you to go. You were not attacked by Chinese? No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you went down to one sun and then where did you go from there? Uh well, we evacuated Hungnam, Hungnam on uh, Christmas Eve. The Navy's great. They got white sheets and showers. Yeah. And uh, then we went from there. We were going to the last units off the beach. The engineers blew up the harbor when we were leaving. But then we went to Pusan. Mm -hmm. And then it was fighting all the way back up. So... Before you left Hungnam, there were many North Korean refugees, right? Oh, you bet. Tell me about it. What did you see? How many and how was the situation there? Well, the roads are full of people. Uh, I've got some pictures of them, but mm. uh, it just, uh, you feel sorry for them because they loaded a lot of them on ships and took them with us. Some of them, what ones that they could get on. But uh, you can't take everybody. And it's a sad thing to uh, see that. It's uh, the worst one I ever saw while I was there was uh, I went into the so village that had been bombed and. Uh, I saw this old man and a girl was laying on on top of him, and I thought they were asleep. To wake them up, and I found out they were frozen to death. That's the worst thing in my experience in North Korea. Mm. It just, boy, it just, the old man and the little girl, it is hard, 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 uh, hard to think about. Yeah. You still remember those? Oh, you bet. I'll mm. never, never forget that. I have to think of something else. And you took the ship from Hungnam. You went down to Busan. And then from Busan, where did you go? Down to Busan? Yeah, and then you went up again. Oh, we started back up through the... Uh, through uh, South Korea, 
And I forget where we got. Uh, by that time, uh, they'd landed a, 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 a west coast of the uh, peninsula, and I think probably around Seoul or somewhere. Incheon? And, uh, Did you the, get into the Incheon? What's that? Incheon. Yeah. Did you go there? The Incheon. Did Where? you go to Incheon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went uh, by it. I didn't go ahead and, uh, I didn't land at Winston. We drove up. Yeah, drove we, up. We went up through the... Uh, and, uh, so you were still driving, right? Oh, yeah. 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 W with uh, your boss? <laughs> well, we just, uh, we had, our job was to go out and find positions for the mortar company. And uh, so we were always out somewhere scouting around whatever Captain Edward wanted. And uh, that was our job, was to go find positions for the company to set their guns up. I remember when the first Chinese, first Chinese we saw, we were going, actually we were 20 miles behind the lines. And uh, they, uh, we saw these rocks, what we thought were rocks, on the ridge above us. And then the captain said, those are Chinese. So we bailed, I bailed out of the jeep with my rifle, and he bailed out too. And uh, they, uh, uh, one guy came down by the, a grave, they buried the dead up on top of the ground. And there's one Chinese come down by there and hid behind it and took a few shots at me and I shot at him and neither one of us could hit the broadside of a barn, luckily. And he got up and run when I run out of ammunition, so I had bandoliers of ammunition on my 50 caliber machine gun. But I didn't think to grab one when I took off. Mm. And we went on up into reserve, and uh, by then the Chinese were up by the reserve. And uh, so uh, Captain Edward got on the 50 and started shooting on a saddle in the mountains. And you could see guys fall once in a while, but they didn't even duck because they had those little white packets of powder that they used. Cocaine, I suppose, mm. and uh, I found we found a lot of that stuff. I never used any of it, but I think that's probably why they never ducked or fell down when they were marching across the ridge. But then, uh, at the end of that, we stayed in reserve. And, uh, you were jeep driver, but well, how come were you in? sort of very close contact with the Chinese, how? Well, uh, I don't really know how close it was, probably 500 yards, 100, 300 yards anyway. But uh, when they were on the ridge, we were probably within 100 yards of them. But, uh, we had, uh, I, I had two rocks with me uh, that uh, were put with me to be able to speak Korean to English, say one was going to be a veterinarian. Do you remember where you were in the west or right, east? And on, the, on the peninsula? Yeah. Well, probably, probably about the middle, because I remember uh, for some reason, this, we had to leave our position, which I think was about the middle of the peninsula, and we had to travel all night to the uh, east coast to uh, back up a company over there that the Chinese were attacking. So we were probably about in the middle of the peninsula. Was it Iron Triangle? Yeah, it could have been close to that somewhere. I don't uh, 
We didn't even think of those things at that time. Right. Just like I didn't think of the cold until I read the book of the Korean War and it was 63 below zero. <laughs> I knew it was cold, but what? nobody nobody knew how cold it was. Mm. Where did you sleep? What's that? Where did you sleep? Where did you sleep? In a sleeping bag. Sleeping bag? Yeah, not on the ground. The not in the bunker? Oh, if I could find a foxhole, usually I tried to find one the Chinese dug because they did a better job of digging than we did. <laughs> and uh, so I'd always try and find a hole that's been dug ahead of me. I didn't want to dig one. I'm lazy. But uh, one foxhole I had that they dug was they're small people because they dug this and around a boulder and I had to sleep around the rock. But it was better than to sleep in on top of the ground. But the reason, one reason, my mother sent me a little 25 automatic. I had a 45, but I wanted a 25 in my bag because at that time the Chinese were carrying guys off in their sleeping bags taking them prisoner, and I wasn't going to let that happen to me, so I always carried a gun in my sleeping bag. Because the Chinese are quiet, they, they, had, they didn't have half the equipment we did, but they beat the heck out of us. Mm. I mean, when we retreated, uh, when they first hit us and we retreated, we'd get in our trucks and cars and drive for half a night, and they'd hit us the next day. All they had was walking and uh, uh, mules and pack rats, or packs. So they didn't have much. All they had was the clothes they sleep in. They didn't even have a sleeping bag. They were quilted just like a sleeping bag, but uh, they didn't sleep. They slept in them and fought in them. Wow. Tough people. Tough people, yeah. What did you eat? Did you eat a hot meal? What's that? Did, what did you eat? Did you eat hot sea, meal? Sea rations. Sea rations? Yeah. What was your favorite? Well, probably franks and beans. <laughs> I hated hash because... <laughs> my dad had hash during the uh, uh, oh depression, and I hated hash, so I never ate hash. <laughs> but I like the spaghetti wasn't bad, and the franks and beans. And I didn't smoke, so I could trade my cigarettes for candy. So I had plenty of candy bars and stuff besides the, whenever it came up. How much were you paid? How, how much you were paid? How much I was paid? Yeah. Oh, boy, I can't even remember. Do you remember what my pay was? Million? You said part of it to me, because we were married. Then. You were married? We were married when we married. No. We got married just before I went to Korea. We were married the first day of April of 1950. April Fool's Day. 1950? <laughs> mm -hmm. So your marriage was not real? Yes, it was real. <laughs> Married on the April Fool's Day. Yes. <laughs> I was fooling, she we, wasn't. We didn't know what day it was. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> really, I never even thought about it. Me either. It was the first of the April Fool's Day when we were married. <laughs> what a choice you made. <laughs> Well, we were going to get married, and we just got married. We were married in the church, and my sister and her husband were with us. Yeah. So, but you didn't know when you married that he would go to yeah. Korean War. So? He was before the war. Yeah. So when he knew that he was going to go to Korea for war, what was your reaction, Laura? Well, I didn't like it. What did I you didn't. say to him? 
Well, I couldn't stop him. He was already in the military, and I knew he had to go. Mm -hmm. Were you able to talk to him over the phone? No, just letters. That's all we had between us. How often did you write the letter to Carl? Well, I don't remember, but every few days at least, you know, you know regularly while he was in the service. Did he write a letter back to you? Yes, yes. How often? Same. I'd get a letter and, write, and he would and write back and then he would write. So he wrote quite often. So he was all writing letter all the time, didn't work too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when he found the time, but he did write a lot. Yes. Carl, do you remember that you were writing letter back to Laura? Well, not very often, but I wrote as often as I could. Do you remember the Korean soldier or Korean people that used to work with you? Oh yeah, I've got pictures of them. You were in the Kansas line? Yeah, the Kansas line. Mm. It was a defense position in case the Chinese run us back that far. Right. Just another job. When did you leave Korea? When did I leave? Oh. I think you were there 14 months. Huh? I think you were there 14 months. Yeah, I was. If you were on the front line, you got to go home earlier. Mm -hmm. If you weren't. You had to stay 14 months. Got extended for. So you left around 19, early 1952 or late 1951? Uh, no, it would be 52. 52. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was there. Uh, it was just, a, uh, I spent about four months, two months. Yeah. I don't know. I have, it's, uh, Hard to remember. It's, uh... What was the most difficult thing during your service in Korea? Well, missing your wife. That would be. <laughs> uh, but then, one of the happiest times. Yeah. Was when I was that went down to get the mail for the company, and on the way back, I read the mail. Because I had a, a friend of mine was driving, and I found out that we had a, I had a daughter, and I was happy as a lark going back to camp because I found out that she'd had a daughter while I was in Korea. So you got your daughter when you were in Korea? Yeah, she was nine months old before I came yeah, home. Seven. Seven she months. Seven months old. What's her birthday? Uh, July the, the July 6th, 6th. 1950. Yeah. 51. 51? Mm -hmm. How come I have 50 out there? <laughs> <laughs> so you were pregnant mm -hmm. before he left for Korea? Right. Wow. Just barely. Barely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, a, that's amazing. <laughs> well... It was, in a way, it was kind of planned just in case I didn't come back. All right, <laughs> come on. But did you, did you get the picture of your daughter? Yes, he did. In Korea? Mm -hmm. You sent the picture? I sent the picture. How was it, Carl, to see the picture of your daughter well, in, I didn't in have Korea? The picture then. I did. I sent you pictures. You... First thing? Right. What did I do with it? Must be the man, my real full. Come on. <laughs> my memory's not good either. <laughs> so you must have seen it. And, yep. That's an amazing story. So after you come back, have you been back to Korea? One time. One time? When? When we went, I think it was seven years ago now, when we went, went back uh, the, the Eden Church. church took two people from every state and how we were lucky enough to be the two people from Washington, I don't know. But two of you went together? Went together no. So as a, as a group and we met up with everybody after we got there and we mm. had 
five days and six nights yeah. in Korea. Carl, tell me, when you were in Korea 2015, seven years ago, how was it? Oh, world of difference because there were no buildings hardly standing when I went to Seoul uh, the first time up. And uh, the Korean people have done a fantastic job. They, uh, it's unbelievable what they uh, have done. And they're the most thankful people that you've ever met. It was a beautiful city. It was very, very clean. Every place we went, I never saw any litter around. I was really impressed. Excellent. I, I was. So it was worth for you to miss your husband for a while? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would say that, but... Uh, it was wonderful that I got to go back and see where he was, although it was not the same Excellent. anymore. What about you, Carl? What would you say to the Korean people who are watching this interview? You'll never find a bunch of better people, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take them, them over some of the people we got in this country today. We've got some sad people in this country today. And, Are you uh, proud of you, proud of, of yourself as a Korean War veteran? Oh, you bet. Carl's very patriotic. I am. Very patriotic, yes. Yep, I've always been that way and always will be. Alrighty. I'm ready to fight now. Alrighty. <laughs> Any other Comments that you want to leave to this interview? Laura? Mm -hmm. About your doll? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do have a doll collection of over 300 dolls. So 300? 300. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to leave this? Into the Just museum? To my two daughters. Two daughters? Whatever they want to do with them. Alrighty. Keep them or get rid of them or All whatever. Right. Can I take a picture when sure. I when I. All righty, thank you so much. Again, Carl, thank you very much for your service, honorable service. Well, because of your fight, there is a Korea. Well, it was just a job, and uh, everybody did it to the best, and I was lucky that I had Captain Aylward to lead to, to get me straight and to get, keep me uh, thinking good because. Best officer you'd, you'd ever meet, and it's a shame that the military never got it in their third division books mm. because he was a fighter. He, when he took a line company, I think it was I Company, he finally got a line company, and the Chinese hit him and run him off the hill. But he went up and rounded about 60 guys back and took the hill back. Oh, and he wasn't saying, go get him. He said, come on, because he was in the lead when they did it. And uh, man was terrific. And uh, that's part of the war I'll never forget. And uh, he, uh, it's a shame that he was forgotten by the 3rd Division because they didn't put him in the book. Because you know why? Huh? Do you know why he was not included in the book? I have no idea because uh, he'd been a, a battlefield commission commander by Patton himself, and yet he didn't get mentioned in the book. What's his name again? Could you spell it? Captain Francis T. Aylward was his name. And he's, uh, I heard from his daughter because I was looking for him. And she found me through the Korean, Korean veterans uh, thing where you're looking for people. And she wrote me. And uh, he'd been uh, the head of the uh, Salvation Army back where he lived and everything since the war. And uh, quite a man. Yep. Thank you for mentioning that. And so that you are honor him and we remember, okay? 
Well, I hope you put him in there because there's no better commander than what he was because he was a born fighter. <laughs> he wanted to be where the action was. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.